Hello and welcome to another video. This is a review of the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. So I've had it for about three months now and I've used it for almost 120 hours. And it's been good so far. As you can see I've also done a few mods on it and I will show them on screen now so you get a better look. First off I bought the anti-vibration feet of their own website and I also have the hanger for the top glass panel so that when you print PLA you can have the top on the side instead. Then I also have a, a shell around the screen and a tool caddy or tool hanger whatever you want to call it. And then I have a, a plate that prevents the filament roll from scratching the printer. And of course a slide for the poop chute and uh, the bin that it goes into. And as you can see the bin is in a different color because I didn't have the green one back then when I printed it because that was the first mod that I did. And I, I didn't want to waste any filament so I haven't changed it out and it doesn't bother me that much. I might uh, replace it in the future with a green one. And I will link all the mods in the description, both the, the one from their own site and the 3D files for the other mods. I have had a few problems though, only two. One of them was that one time when I tried to load some filament, it somehow changed the hot end temperature to 40 degrees instead of 250. And it didn't want to change even if I tried to do it manually. But it helped to just turn the printer off with the switch on the back side and then turn it back on and then it worked again. And the other problem I had was that one time the interface froze or the whole printer actually froze. The weird thing about that was even if I turned off the switch in the rear the screen and the lights and everything was still on so that means that the switch is is not for the power supply it's just for the printer and somehow it didn't turn off even though I switched it off. Unlike on the Ender 3 printer, if you turn the switch off, it's the actual power supply, so it can't stay on after that. And if I try to compare it to my Ender 3 V2 that I had previously, it's kind of hard to compare them because the, all the differences are so big. This is a much newer printer, so it has a lot more features, like the closed enclosure, and it's faster, it has better print quality, and the list goes on. But like I said, you can't really compare them because it's so much newer and it also was about 100 euros more expensive. And I also myself can't, can't compare them to the Bamboo Lab printers because I have no experience with them. But from what I've heard, this is a really good competitor to the, the cheaper Bamboo Lab printers. And in some cases even the X1 Carbon. And I'm also waiting for the multi-material device to be released. They have said themselves that they are doing their best to optimize it, to, to deliver the best possible experience for their users. And they will update us in the future how that goes. So it will most likely take a few months. My guess is Maybe February or at least Q1 2026 is my guess. And I will of course uh, do an unboxing of that when it releases and when I get it. How long after release I do the unboxing and that depends on how long the waiting time is. Like for example this printer I waited for two and I think it was two and a half months that I waited for it to arrive. But yeah, when I get it, I will do an unboxing and later most likely a review on that one too. So it's a good bang for the buck printer and uh, there is a few bugs and errors. But like I said, I've, I've only experienced two problems in 120 hours and that's really good actually if you compare it 
to my ender that I had problems with uh, about every print. And this one also gets software updates that you do over the air instead of uh, having to flash it with the file on a SD card like on the ender. So I would say it's worth it and the uh, waiting times are just a few days right now when I'm filming this. They send it almost immediately. So if you're looking for a printer with an enclosure and that's capable of printing a lot of materials for a still cheap price, this is a good printer for that. And I would say it has been worth my money at least. And I'll also show you a few time lapses of stuff that I've printed with this printer now in the end of the video. So yeah, I think that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.